Easter, which is also Election Sunday for the Pastoral Council and School Board. In your pews, you will find election ballots with the names of those eligible to run. We ask that all registered parishioners who are older than 18 years of age either check the name or fill in a write-in candidate for two school board spots and three pastoral council spots. Then fold the ballot in half and put it in the offertory or second collection. Some of you may notice that Mick Schwager's name is not on the ballot. Father Dennis made a mistake and didn't realize that parents, spouses, and children of school employees are not allowed to be on the school board, and he apologizes to Mick for this mistake. The third Sunday monthly collection for St. Joseph's will be taken up this weekend for Dubuque County Right to Life. All true love has its origins in God, who is love. The Christian believer must seek to love as God loves and to share as abundantly as God shares love with his creatures. Love is the very hallmark of a Christian life. Our entrance hymn is number 310, Table of Plenty, 310. <laughs> Come to the feast of heaven and earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Oh, come and sit at my table where saints and sinners are friends. I Welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven and earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of Without money, come and drink without price. My feast of gladness will feed your spirit with faith and fullness of life. Come to the feast of heaven and earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide. gather ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Just I say this and we get it out of the way, I ask someone in the back, what do we do if there's a storm or a tornado while we're in here? We both looked at each other and said, well, we try to get out, you know, and do something. I guess we go to the basement, is that correct? All right, and we go kindly, not, sh well, I'm not going to push you, and don't you push me, so, because we're going to talk about love today in the homily, okay, there. It is continuing to be Easter, and so we bless this water and enter into a rite of sprinkling which remind ourselves of the baptism that we all have. Lord, our God and creator, we bless praise your name. In the beginning you made man and woman so that they might enter a communion of life and love. That's the wrong prayer. We're going to get that later. Here. Blessed are you, Lord, all-powerful God, who in Christ, the living water of salvation, blessed and transformed us. Grant that when we are sprinkled with this water, or make use of it in any way, we will be refreshed inwardly by the power of the Holy Spirit and continue to walk in the new life we have received at baptism. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Easter mystery within us so that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul and Barnabas had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable number of disciples, they returned to Lysyria and Inigum and to Antioch. They strengthened the spirits of the disciples and exhorted them to persevere in the faith, saying, it is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed <laughs> elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting, commended them to the Lord in whom they had put their faith. Then they traveled through Pisidia and reached Pamphylia. After proclaiming the word at Perga, they went down to Attilia. From there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had now accomplished. And when they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Revelation. Then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, 
and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Judas had left them, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified with him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and God will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. I give you a new commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. So the end of the Gospel today, very familiar words. Um, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Well, honestly, those are okay words for me. Um, but I'm not used to hearing the word love very often directed to me. Um, when it happens, I you probably say, well, he's not used to that, or I sort of feel myself stiffen up a little. I don't know what to do with that. Many of you probably do, and many of you probably hear that more than I do. Um, you might respond better than I do. I, I, I know that I'm loved, um, but I'm still, you know, kind of uncomfortable, just being very honest with you about it. 
when the word is addressed to me. In fact, it also spreads over into my relationship with God, and I think a lot of things do. We relate to God based a lot on how we relate to other people. You know, I can remember uh, when I was teaching, you know, it was hard to talk to some kids about God as a loving father because they didn't have one at home. It wasn't very loving. And so I, it was hard to make that transition. So, you know, I, I know God loves me, but it always kind of stays in my head and it doesn't kind of filter down, um, whatever that theory is, the drop-down theory or the drip-down, I don't know. It doesn't do that all that well. So I, I hear it a lot, I, and I hear people use the word a lot. Um, maybe we use it today even more than what people did in the past. That's probably true. Um, but I don't use the word a lot. I know that. Um, particularly when talking with another person or something like that. Um, probably you might do that more often than not. So finding all these love words in today's gospel, like just like, oh no, and I have to preach on it yet too, so I probably shouldn't have taken the parish assignment this weekend had I looked ahead. That was the feeling. You know, so what is love? Well, I would think probably a lot of us would start out by saying, well, it's a feeling. It's a feeling we have. We have a feeling for other people. Um, it's also possible that we would say, well, I have a feeling for God. That's a good thing. Um, but that's kind of a, sometimes for some of us, it's a challenge to get there because it's all in my head. You know, I know it, but I don't always necessarily feel that. There was an author some years ago when I was teaching high school by the name of Father John Powell. He was a Jesuit priest. He taught in a lot of the Jesuit boys' schools in the country here. And he wrote many little books. They were quite good, I thought. And he d did a thing on love, and he said, love is not a feeling. Love is a decision. Well, it makes a lot of sense to me. Now think back the last time that you were at a wedding. Maybe you were one this spring yet. Or think back last fall or summer. And what the young couple, the man and the woman, stand up in front of you. And, you know, and Jack says, I, Jack, take you, Denise, to be my lawful wife. Well, that's pretty clear, a decision. Jack, in front of the whole church, says, I have decided, Denise, to take you as my lawful wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, better for worse, that whole thing. It's an incredibly beautiful thing, but Jack has decided to do that, that that's a good thing to do. And that's what our love of God and love of Jesus needs to be as well. Um, it's also how we should probably think of loving other people. We don't always feel like that on any given day. Those of you who are going to have some marriage blessings later in Mass, if you've been married, you know, like a month or two or 20, 30 years, there have been a few days when you didn't feel love, but you do because you decided that I will do this, and I will do this faithfully for a long time. That's an incredible thing. So that was John Powell's sort of way to kind of talk about love and what it, how it operates in our lives. There's another John that I go to c today, John Shea, another man who writes books. He writes um, reflections on all the readings for the Sundays of different Sundays. And he usually ends up by giving examples. Well, the one he gives for today to help open up this idea of loving others and loving God is he remembers in his own home, and he talks about the family photos that were either on tables or hanging on the walls. And then he also talks about the crucifix. Now, I don't mean a cross. I mean the one with the body on it, the real crucifix type. That, there was one of those in the house as well. And he said, you know, I probably walk by those things <laughs> like many times a day. They're just on the wall. 
But then he said, from time to time, when I would walk by those family photos, one of them would just like strike me as if I had seen it now for the very first time. And he said, I would begin to kind of ponder who those folks are and what they've been in this family of mine, who they, who they are to me, John says. You know, like, that's my grandpa. And I was a little boy when my grandpa died, or whatever it is. But it would strike us as if he, you know, he had never seen the photo before, and he was just mesmerized, and he was taken up by it. It had a very cumulative effect on him. And then he said when I would sometimes, you know, walk by the crucifix, um, you know, you just walk by it most of the time, but and every now and then it would just like pop at him. And he would say, that's the Son of God, the one who came here and died on the cross for me. Well, that's pretty powerful stuff. And he said, and I would think about that, and I would think about what effect that's had on me and how that works in my life. The other thing I was remembering, and it was kind of an insight as I was preparing the homily, is that, you know, maybe my thing with the word love and how it operates in my own life is that, um, you know, I remember a crucifix in my house. I don't remember a lot of family photos. I think they were somewhere in a box somewhere, but I didn't walk by them very often, as I recall. Maybe that's a piece of where I find myself in my old age today. But anyway, that whole idea. And he said, and as I thought about those family members, and as I thought about that crucifix, the question that would come to me is, so, so how do I pay it forward? How can I pay forward what I've been given by those people whose photos are on the wall, by that Jesus who I see now on the cross? And that would lead to, well, I love other people. That's a way to pay it forward. And I love God. So, you know, that's how he explained that. But he always has a twist. John Shea never gives a simple answer to anything when he's doing his reflections. And he said, you know, in spite of all those photos, and in spite of that crucifix that I would walk by as a kid many, many times, and in spite of the fact that every now and then one of those faces would pop at me and I would think about it, or the crucifix would do the same, he said, none of that would have ever happened. None of that influence would have ever gotten into my skin had I not been a part of a community where not only did they tell me the stories of grandpa and grandma and my aunts and uncles and all those folks and the story of Jesus, but they lived it. He said they, honest to God, lived it. They lived like a family. And when they messed up, they confessed to each other, and they tried to do it better the next time. And they would relate that same way with God. And he said without that community, all of those things, those photos and all those stories and all these beautiful things in the windows and the stations of the cross, that none of that would matter if there wasn't a community that was living it, that put it into action, and that you could get kind of sucked up into. They're not just stories. They didn't just happen 100 years ago and Jesus 2,000 years ago. That stuff happens now. And he said it was the community of the family, and it's the community of my faith, my church, my parish, wherever he was, that made that work. So what's the take home for today, for us? Well, I began to think about that, and I think one thing is maybe starting to be missing in our lives today, and that is the element of community. I think it's getting away from us from time to time, maybe in a big way sometimes. We're pretty individualistic. You know, we live our own lives. You know, we do my own thing. And, you know, grandpa doesn't want to do it, well then let him stay at home, or whatever that is. You know, <laughs> that, that element of, of, of family, that element of community seems to be getting away. 
So sometimes, you know, people go to a family gathering. It's a birthday, it's an anniversary, a family reunion. And, and they spend most of their time wondering how fast they can get out of there to get where they want to be, really. Because they don't want to be there. They've had enough potato salad for six years. So how do I get out of here? And to very honestly, you know, there may be one or two or four or so here today, right now. It's like, I wonder how long is this going to go on? Because i got a lot of stuff to do. i got stuff I want to do. That sense of community, that sense of, of being together and telling the stories and looking at the photos and just being wallowed up in who those folks are and who this Jesus is, that, I think, is getting away from us. We tell the stories. We know the information. But until we see it lived and share it together, it ain't going to work very well. And we won't know how to love other people. And we won't know how to love God. And we won't be able to pay it forward. So I would encourage you to think in your own personal life, is the idea of community getting away from me? Do I even know what that is? Is that a value for me? Am I willing to spend time with faith people at mass in a faith-sharing group with family on an afternoon? You know, some of us are old enough like me to know that what you did on a past Sunday, you went to visit family. Did you always want to do it? No, you didn't. You didn't feel like it but you decided it was the best thing to do, to connect and be a family and be a parish. So that's that difference between love as a feeling, love as a decision. I think we decide a lot. And you know, and that's what Jesus did. Jesus said, I am going to love these people. And because of that, we're here today. He loved us and he asked us to do the same as he did. And he said, and others will know you by how you love each other. So here again, those words of the gospel. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. As I said, Jesus decided to do it that way. Did he always feel like living that commitment? Personally, I don't think probably he did. I think there were some many days maybe when he had to go back and say, well, I decided to love these 12 disciples. I don't feel like it. God, can you help me? But he had made the decision. So have we made that kind of decision to love other people to love God. How will you and I decide to pay that forward in how we live this week? God did not make consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified 
who has spoken to the prophet. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So we have heard and reflected on God's word. We now bring forth our prayers of intercession and petition. For all Christians, may the power of Christ's resurrection and ascension enable us in rising above all that divides us as we proclaim him as our sovereign Lord and Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For governments and world leaders, may the gospel message of hope and redemption for all inform and direct their decisions and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, may they experience God's healing touch. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For safe travel for those traveling to and from Washington, D.C. for the senior class trip, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For favorable weather for the planting season, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the young people in this faith community, may Jesus be their guide as they discern ways to use their gifts and talents. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who be remembering this Mass who have died, mark with the sign of faith the living and deceased members of the Leo Even family, Peter Sprank, Eldon and Vina Stilmonkis, and Diane Hager, that just as Christ shared our mortal bodies, they may come to share in his eternal glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, we give you these prayers this day. We lift them up with confidence that you will hear them, take them into your own heart, and grant them to us out of your goodness and generosity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 327, number 327. Yes, 
O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, we pray grant that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this Easter time above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and you make all things holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, again giving you thanks, 
He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving suffering of your Son, as we celebrate his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her holy husband, Joseph, and your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed sisters and brothers, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Again, formed by God's teaching and at the command of our Savior Jesus, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ and the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Our song for communion is number 338, Behold the Lamb, number 338.
You know, it's really amazing what happens and what we get here when we come, you know? Um, we come from various places, our own homes and places of living, and we walk into this room and we praise God and the Gloria and hear his word and think about it. And then we bring up little bread and little wine and we get the body and the blood of Jesus Christ in return. It doesn't go on. I mean, it's never any other place can you do it. It's just amazing, just absolutely amazing. And it's always here. And it's because he said, I, I love you, God. I, I, I love you. And um, that's odd for me even to say, because I don't say very often, you know? And that's what Jesus says to us each time we come. I heard last night, I don't know if it's true or not, you can filter it through your own, but that the trip that's happening, you know, with the seniors is includes not 
it includes not just Marquette students, but a, a few, I think, from the public school. And because it's a parish, it's a parish event. You don't find that too many places, folks. That's a wonderful thing that happens if that's really what's going on these days. It's so inclusive. It's so wonderful. I walk into a lot of places, you know, and um, you get a feel. It's a good feel here. This is a nice place. You probably feel the same about it. I hope you do. It seems like a nice parish. Now it's time to bless those married in May. We have any. The last time I was here, nobody stood up because it was March. Ah, it was Lent. Any May anniversary? Yay, we have a few. All right, and the rest of us, look around who they are. The rest of us, this is the prayer I was going to use before, and I got stopped, you know, because it was wrong. Extend your hand in blessing over these couples. O oh Lord God and Creator, we bless and we praise your name. In the beginning, you made man and woman so that they might enter a communion of life and love. You likewise bless the unions of these couples that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness on them today. Amid the struggles and joys of their life, you have preserved the union between them. Renew their covenant of marriage. Increase your love in them and strengthen their bond of peace so that surrounded by their families and children, they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for your witness of love and marriage. Very much. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, O Lord, we pray, and lead those you have filled with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ending. Go in peace. Glory to the Lord. Our closing hymn is number 549, All the Ends of the Earth, number 549.